President Putin is back in Ukraine. Now, very bold move. Everyone was rather shocked when Putin visited Ukraine the first time because he had just been charged with criminal acts and now he's back in Ukraine apparently. Now again, we cannot verify when he went back into Ukraine, but what many people are saying it was either before Orthodox Easter or a little bit after Orthodox Easter. We'll get into all of that, but first let's analyze this video and see what Putin is doing in Ukraine. very formal. Apparently, he's meeting with top Russian commanders and generals, more specifically, um, the generals in charge of the airborne troops. I noticed in the background some pretty old phones real quick. Let me... You guys see that in this little corner over here? Russian technology. What's interesting though, you see over here, they did blank out the screen. So that does leave some evidence that this is probably an important meeting, important meeting. And this was actually like, this is legit. Cause a lot of people will say, oh, this is fake. So. I found that interesting. I didn't. I thought that um, Putin has to salute back. I mean, in U.S. military customs, the president always salutes back because he's technically the commander in chief. But notice he just shakes their hands. Maybe he's just trying to get the heck out of there. No salute. Interesting. Hey, Putin rolls deep. He's got all his security. Okay, according to Reuters, the Kremlin said Putin attended a military command meeting in Kherson region. He heard reports from commanders of the Airborne Forces and the Dnieper Army Group and other senior officers on the situation in Kherson and Zaporizhia regions, both of which Moscow has proclaimed part of Russia. And obviously, as we know, Ukraine will never identify any of those regions as part of Moscow, Russia, any of that. Now, what's interesting is what Putin said to his military leaders. It is important for me to hear your opinion on how the situation is developing to listen to you. And many people have been rather critical of Putin and the Kremlin of not actually listening to their commanders and what actually is going on. A lot of people are claiming delusion from the Kremlin and Putin. I don't think this is necessarily true. I think Russia does know what's going on and they do listen to their military leaders, but they're just at a standstill with their offensive postures. I also don't think they expected the mass amount of support going into Ukraine and the amount of javelins, anti-tank weapons that are just stopping Russian armor. Now, here's a separate clip that I find rather interesting. One thing about this whole Ukraine-Russia conflict is that orthodoxy seems to be smack dab in the middle of it. Because Putin claims to be Christian Orthodox, and under orthodoxy, the Russian Orthodox Church claims that it rules over all of Ukrainian orthodoxy. But Ukrainian orthodoxy has schismed or split from Russian orthodoxy. But what you see on a surface level, it's not all about javelins and pushing in the trenches. We're also talking about a religious warfare behind the scenes. And this is a rather interesting clip. It speaks for itself, so let's play it. Let me read that for you. Putin also presented them with a rare copy of an icon once owned by a leader of the Russian army dating back to the 19th century. This is a copy. There is another copy and the original, he said. And for those of you who don't know, um, an Orthodox icon is something that you pray to or it's a religious relic. It's very important to Orthodoxy and how they perform religious ceremonies. So again, this is why many people speculated that Putin was in Ukraine around Easter, either before or after. And for those of you who don't know, Orthodox Easter comes after regular Easter. Sure. 
I also thought this was an interesting notation in the Reuters article. The head of the state also congratulated the servicemen on the Easter holiday and gave them copies of icons as gifts. Again, besides the fact of an icon to other individuals just being a piece of metal or whatever, this has a lot of symbolism in religion and for the military. And one thing that sort of seems to be keeping the Russian military together is the fact that they are predominantly orthodoxy. And the issue at the beginning of the conflict is that when Russia was starting to take out Ukraine and take out Ukrainian churches, those were also orthodox churches. So we had a moral and ethical issue and also some legal issues there. But you can really see this holiday was really important for Putin to go and show, hey, our support for the Russian orthodoxy overpowers Ukrainian orthodoxy. And maybe I'll do a longer video on that. It's really complicated. I'm trying to give you the most surface level thing ever. But nonetheless, um, it shows that Putin is involved in this war and he wants to see what's going on from his commanders. Um, I'm not surprised that they made it all public that he wants to hear from the Russian generals. I'm sure all of this got blasted on state television. Because Russia is listening to what everyone's saying and Russia knows damn well that no one was ever convinced that Putin cared about the front lines or what the generals were saying. So yeah, Putin is back in Ukraine. Let me know what you guys think. Um, I think it's rather interesting and I think it shows that either there's a little bit of desperation there or it shows that Putin is not afraid and he just wants to go to the front lines and see what's going on. Make sure to leave your comments and opinions down below. My name is T-Spli and that's the video.